Hi, this is Brian Long. I'm a freelance consultant, troubleshooter and trainer working with Delphi and C++ Builder, among other tools. This session is about logging within Delphi FireMonkey applications. When debugging an application, there's nothing more valuable than evidence to assess a situation after the fact or even during the fact. So we're going to be looking at what FireMonkey avails us of in terms of opportunities to provide evidence using simple log statements and so on. So let's see what we can do with FireMonkey in terms of logging. The first option that presents itself is one of the FireMonkey platform agnostic platform services, in this case iFMX logging service. You can inquire whether a service is available and then get a reference to it, and in this case the logging service is available on all platforms, and the available log method has the same signature as the format function. Here's some code using the logging platform service. And whilst it's perfectly functional and perfectly correct, it's rather more verbose than it needs to be. So other than saying, here is some code that uses a FireMonkey platform service, that's it, I'm not gonna focus on this code anymore at all. The reason being that that service calls into another FireMonkey piece of agnostic functionality, in this case, a class method of a class implemented in the FireMonkey types unit. So log.d, is a much simpler way of invoking exactly the same behavior as the logging service, which simplifies the code to this. The log D method has a variety of overloads that you're at liberty to explore at your leisure. However, the bigger question is where does the output of log D go? Where do these debug strings go such that we can assess the execution flow of our application and see what's going on as it runs through? And the answer is it depends upon various factors. If you believe the documentation for logd and ifmx logging service log, then you would expect the output to always go in Delphi's event log debug window. Um, but that is only the case for targeting Win32 and Win64 applications. In those cases, when you're running in the debugger, then sure, the output does go in the debug log. In fact, let's just prove that point. So we'll run the application up and uh, up starts the debugger. The event log is populating away nicely and then if we induce some log messages, some debug strings, then sure enough, we get some debug output lines in the event log, assuming all the properties are at the default. And this is because the event log window is listening out for certain Windows API calls, the ones that log.d on the Windows platform is invoking, namely the output debug string API, listening out for those, picking up the information and displaying them for us in the debug event log window. So that's all fine for Win32, Win64 targets running inside the debugger. What about when we're not running in the debugger? Well, we can still use uh, other tools. Uh, there is a tool called Debug View from sysinternals.com, which is just a, a redirect into somewhere inside the Microsoft website. Uh, Sys, Sys internals uh, have a lot of useful free tools. Debug View is one of them, which does much the same sort of job as the event log window does in Delphi. It listens for output debug string and displays the results therein. So let's prove that point by running outside the debugger and invoking some log D calls and there we go the messages are being displayed inside of debug view so debugging not debugging win32 win64 that covers that what about all the other platforms having dealt with windows targets let's now move on to a mobile target this time android android comes with a uh, an sdk chock full of tools most of which as delphi developers we need not pay any attention to in the case of logging, however, there is a tool, well, actually there's a pair of tools, although one of them has been deprecated, with which we can see logging output. In Android terminology, all of the logging output from all of the applications and system services uh, running is called logcat. And we can get uh, the logcat output displayed on the command prompt or within a terminal, but it's not particularly manageable or workable in that fashion. So generally speaking, we use a GUI tool. The original GUI tool, uh, was called DDMS, or the Dalvik Debug Monitoring System. Uh, that's been deprecated and replaced with Monitor, which does the DDMS job as well as some other jobs as well. So how do we find the Android SDK tools? OK, it's actually easiest to do this from within Rad Studio. So if we bring up the Tools Options dialog and move down to the SDK Manager and select the Android SDK, you can see the base installation path sat there. And in fact, you can see that it's actually installed within the shared public documents area. So let's copy that path out of there 
we can paste that into a copy of Windows Explorer and that takes us to the installation folder for the Android SDK. From there, navigate into the Tools subfolder. There you can see the original and deprecated DDMS tool and you can also see the replacement and active monitor tool. So let's get that up and running. Ah, there it is. Okay, so when it pops up, we need to make sure that the DDMS perspective is active, which it is, and then all the action occurs in the LogCat tab. So let's make sure this tab takes up the majority of the screen here, and then we can see all of the uh, debug strings being pumped out into this LogCat window. And this is where the output from our calls to LogD will also appear, and you might therefore see, given the speediness of the stream of information going through, it might be a bit tricky to keep hold of where our messages are within this log cap. And that's where the filters come in. So uh, I'll set up a little filter here, such that only um, debug strings emitted from my application, those applications which have a package ID starting with comblong, um, satisfy the filter and will appear in the list. And that gives us ostensibly a clean sheet. Generally speaking, it will be a clean sheet. OK, back in Rad Studio, you can see here in the project options for my simple uh, demo app, in the version info page, I've modified the package name, as mentioned, to have a com.long starting uh, prefix. It defaults to com.embarcadero. And also you can see that I've uh, switched to an Android target. So let's get this puppy up and running. Okay, through the magic of video editing, that's up on my device in a trice. I'm going to press the same button that we had on the Windows version of the application, and you'll notice that nothing is appearing in the event log on the screen. However, if we switch over to the uh, monitor, you can see that each time I press the button, sure enough, we get an appropriate log message going into the monitor filter. So that sort of proves the point with Android. Next on the list, let's have a look at targeting an iOS simulator, in this case, an iPhone 4 simulator. Here we have the application with this big huge button on the screen, and the goal is to try and track down where the debug strings go. And the answer is, it's in the OS 10 or Mac OS console application, but it's very deep, and you'll be hard pressed to find it without a little bit of assistance. And so the assistance is given on this debug menu of the iOS simulator. So under debug, there's a menu item, open system log, with an appropriate shortcut of command slash and what this does is it launches the console application and takes you into the relevant nested library logs core simulator something something under there uh, section and shows you just the logs for this particular application and basically you can see lots of information a lot of it is basically garbage to our eyes but it does include the information that we need namely the relevant to log strings for saying that, for showing that the button has been pressed. When it comes to native iOS applications, iPhone, iPad applications, then we need to delve into Xcode in order to see the debug strings coming out. So what I've got is a 64-bit iOS application running on an iPhone, and I have Xcode sitting here on the screen, and we're going to have a look at where we can find the debug strings because they're tucked away, slightly annoyingly hard to find. So what we need to do is bring down the window menu and choose devices. This takes us to the page where we can see all the devices that Xcode knows about. And here's the iPhone in question. Over on the right hand side, we can see some information about this device. That's not particularly interesting. We can see a list of the installed applications, including the Delphi Log app. And then, well, that's about it, really, except right down at the bottom, there's this tiny little triangle angle and when you hover over it it says show the device console so if we click on that well now this is where we can see all the debug strings coming in so if I go over to the, de uh, the device itself and tap the button there we go we can see the debug strings coming in so that's how we deal with iPhone applications Finally, we need to look at macOS or OS X applications. And the difference here is that LogD is implemented as a call to write line, so it just goes out to the standard output. And we need to answer the question of how we see information being sent to the standard output from a FireMonkey GUI application. Well, here's our application sitting right next to the tool that launched it, PA Server, which happens to be a tool running in a terminal window. And because of that, in fact, it's as simple as just look at PA Server. In order to see your debug strings, your logging information, just look at the PA Server window. So that's about that.
And that's about all we've got time for in this little run-through of logging capabilities in FireMonkey cross-platform applications. So I hope it's been of use. Thank you for joining me. See you soon.